Well, in terms of the risks that could derail um, the growth rate of the Philippines, at least temporarily, we're looking at mostly external risks, not just geopolitical, but also market risks, as you mentioned, capital outflows. And to us, those are two separate issues. So on the geopolitical side, we're looking at how that could affect trade, uh, particularly between uh, major countries of the world that also, of course, affect um, the demand for exports of the emerging markets, but also directly between the U.S. and the Philippines, for instance. Um, so that's what we mean by the geopolitical risk. On the market outflow or the capital outflow risk, um, we're looking at the market uncertainties or the possible um, reactions of the market to the pace and the manner of the normalization of monetary policy by the Fed. Um, of course, this is, um, this is dependent on how the market reacts um, uh, and, and prices in um, the movements of the Fed. Um, we're looking at um, um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the, 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 the pace that is priced in at the moment. Um, the Fed so far has been able to um, communicate its intentions to the market um, fairly well, um, and hopefully that um, passes on as, the, as time goes by. All right, now uh, Central Bank talk. The Banco Central is already forecasting at least $900 million in total outflows for portfolio investments just this year. And certainly in the last trading month, there have been many more days of the gauge ending in the red than in the green. How big of a worry is this exactly? Well, I think it's not really very crucial at the moment. Um, we have seen a slight dip into a deficit of the current account, um, and that is a bit of a concern to foreign investors, and that's what led to this um, slight bit of capital outflow that we've, we've seen um, from the Philippines. But um, I think most of, most of that momentum is already done. Um, the current account has already stabil stabilized for the most part. Um, most of that, in fact, was due to the sharp rise in commodity prices around the world. And add to that the, the rise in imports, particularly, or at least in part due um, to the imports for the infrastructure program of the government. Both of which um, have tapered off in terms of the momentum, um, particularly in terms of the commodity prices, the Philippines being a net energy importer of, uh, uh, of commodities for energy. All right, let us, since you brought that up, the rising prices of commodities, why don't we shift the conversation to inflation for a bit? The BSP says that prices are manageable, but likewise, like you said, we're also seeing oil beginning to trend higher. We also have the peso still hovering near 11-year lows. Now, won't the BSP need to hike rates soon in order to anchor inflation expectation? Well, I think inflation is pretty benign at the moment. What I'm looking at in terms of the BSP's path of interest rates is really the fact that at 6.4, 6.5% growth, um, we're really at the... Um, at the estimate that we have at least for potential growth of the Philippines, that means it's operating at capacity. And as such, it's no longer commensurate for, um, for monetary policy to be as accommodative as it is. That means that the BSP has a lot of space to normalize its monetary policy. So this is, um, I, I emphasize that this is not really a tightening cycle, more of a normalization as it is, um, for instance, with the Fed. So we're looking at, um, for, for 2018, about three, uh, 325 basis point hikes, which is, in our view, a gradual uh, normalization of interest rates. All right, now SNP expects the Philippine economy to grow about 6 and, or 6.4% this year. That is actually a touch lower than government estimates. What is going to be driving this? Outsourcing or exports coming back for good? Well, for us, the, the moderation from the pace of growth in 2017 is actually a good thing. Um, as I mentioned, the potential growth rate, uh, as, as we estimate it, is around 6.5%. So it brings us back to a, a growth rate that is fairly 
neutral in terms of its inflationary effects. Um, in terms of the actual pace at 6.5%, we see it, it, what's more important to us is the distribution of that growth um, in that most of the cylinders of economic growth are actually firing at the moment. So we're seeing consumption being driven as it has always been by solid demographic trends, um, particularly rising middle class and a growing working population. At the same time, that consumption is generating a lot of investment um, to feed it. But lately, we've also seen very strong export volume growth. Um, and that's not only being driven by the usual BPO services, but also in, in recent months um, by surging exports of electronic products. On so that, all in all, it's a, it's a very good picture. 